Hey there, and welcome back to Tim Talks Cooking. Today, we are talking guacamole, my friend. You heard me right, guacamole. You need this recipe. This is delicious. This is one of those go-tos that you need in your kitchen. I'm gonna make it all with totally fresh, delicious ingredients and show you how to deal with all of them so that you can make your own this way. If you've been making guacamole by digging out an avocado and tossing some salsa into it, this is a recipe for you. You are gonna love this. So let's get started. Guacamole is all about big, bold, fresh flavors, and that's what we've got going on here. Check this out. This recipe calls for four medium-sized avocados, and when you choose them at the grocery store, you want to make sure that they're somewhat pliable here at the top, not hard or too soft. One big jalapeno pepper or serrano chili, if you like, or a combination of those. Two cloves of garlic one nice fresh tomato, half a red onion, kosher salt, freshly ground black pepper. Here I've got some lime juice you can use freshly squeezed. This is freshly squeezed that I froze. I buy limes in big bags and then I uh, make ice cubes out of them and use them like this. You'll also need some cilantro if you like cilantro. If you don't, just leave it out. This is going to be delicious without that. Really great guacamole starts with mashed avocado that has some lime juice sprinkled over it and then combined with what's called a pico de gallo, which is a, a small dice of red onion, tomato, jalapeno or serrano and or serrano chilies and cilantro with some uh, garlic and salt and pepper. I'm going to show you how to prepare these things. Here's my half of a red onion. We may not use all of this in our recipe, but this is how you prepare it. We're going to simply slice through almost all the way. I've left the root end intact here. I'm holding it down with the heel of my hand. Be careful, of course, not to cut ourselves. Just don't put your hand in the way of the knife, right? There you go. Give it a turn. Cut it this way. This is what I call the vegematic approach to cutting an onion. A Ronco product, if you were if you grew up in the 70s. And then we're going to cut straight down this way and it's going to cut into a, a nice, fairly small dice. And we can catch the pieces that fall away. You know, this is one of those recipes where you can vary the amount of any given ingredient to your taste. So go ahead and feel free to do that. Let me show you how to prepare the garlic next. I have two whole cloves of garlic here. Smash it to get rid of the peel, just loosens it right off like that. Same there. Get all of that out of the way. We're going to give it a, after we get rid of the peel here, there we go, I'm going to give it a quick rough chop. Turn it so we get kind of a rough dice. And you've seen me do this before. We're going to puree this garlic by using kosher salt as an abrasive. I'm going to sprinkle just about oh, a quarter to a half a teaspoon. And we want some salt in this. Of salt on it. I'm going to use the flat of my knife, push it over the edge, but it's easy, to crush it and to use that as a leverage to grind the salt into the garlic. And as you'll see in just a moment, it turns into a really nice paste. The reason for doing this in guacamole is that it will make a really even distribution of garlic and you won't end up getting a big piece of garlic to chew on or a big garlic surprise. You want this lovely fresh garlic flavor to be evenly distributed throughout your guacamole. And there you have it, right? When you're using fresh tomato in recipes like these, you want to make sure you get rid of the seeds and jelly first. I cut it this way first, and then I squeeze out the seeds and jelly like this. We're going to just toss these into the compost. And here's what we've got left. We're just going to cut that away from the stem and there. And here we're just going to cut this into strips and then into a small dice. Just 
just like this. For the jalapeno pepper, I always use a fresh one for guacamole. Cut the top off. Slice it down the middle. Now, if you like, you can remove this rib and it will make the pepper milder. And you can do that simply by cutting it out. You could use a spoon as well. Some people are a little afraid to use their hands with peppers. You just have to wash them very well afterwards using a washcloth or maybe some baking powder, something abrasive. Anyway, we slice that right out of there and I'm going to make thin strips and then cut it into a fine dice. There we go. And we like it spicy in our house, so... And all of the heat in peppers is in the ribs and the seeds. I'm going to leave this in here for the rest, just to, and also just to show you that you don't have to remove it. Oh yeah, that's going to be great. That's going to be a spicy guacamole. Next comes the cilantro. If you like cilantro, of course, and if you don't, just don't use it. Uh, we love cilantro, and so we use it in all of our Mexican dishes and Indian dishes as well, actually. Give that a nice chop. Always gives a great fresh taste, as well as the lime juice, I think, is always extraordinary. Just going to toss that on in my bowl. Now let me show you how to prepare the avocado. You can see here, this is the stem end, and we want to take our chef's knife and cut through it. There's a pit down there, and we're just going to simply use the pit to guide us around the avocado to cut it into two halves. Give it a twist and pull it apart. You see here that the pit has stuck in one half. Take your chef's knife, give it a whack, twist it, and out it comes. Nothing to it. That goes into the compost. Or if you want to grow an avocado tree, do that. And look that up on the web. That's kind of a cool thing to do, I think. All right, now, next, we can score this with the dull side of our knife into whatever shape we want and spoon it out into our bowl like this. We're going to mash this up anyway, so it doesn't matter what shape it's in. But there you go. Next, we simply want to mix these together and mash up the avocado with a fork. You could use a, a potato masher as well. That works really well here too. Anyway, we're just going to mash it up and keep mixing it like this. Make yours as smooth or as chunky as you like. I stopped using the fork a little while ago. Look, isn't that nice? The nice, chunky, fresh, beautiful guacamole. It's going to need just a little bit of freshly ground black pepper. And just one of my favorite elements in this dish, some lime juice. So I'm just going to pour that right on in there, all of it. That's the juice of about two limes, two small limes like you get these days in the Midwest in the winter. Mix it in. And while before I serve this to guests, I'm going to let the flavors marry in the refrigerator for about two hours. I'm going to give this a taste now because i got to check this out. Well, all right, let's give it a taste here. Wow, I'm pretty sure this is going to be kind of okay, right? Let's see. Mmm. Wow. Mmm. So delicious. What a great combination of flavors. And you know what? Here today in Ohio, it's snowing. It's a cold day. And this is just a lovely, spicy, south of the border thing to have at this time of year. And man, that's going to go great. I think we're going to be eating Mexican for dinner tonight. Anyway, you know what? With guacamole, you can actually freeze the leftovers. I'll put this into, in a container of what we don't eat. Cover it with some saran wrap and put the lid on it, put it in the freezer, and it'll be good for up to about six months.
So check it out. Hope you'll try this recipe. And I also hope that you will like, share, comment, and subscribe, especially subscribe. Thanks for watching us here today at Tim Talks Cooking. We'll catch you next time.